Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Genesis chapter 44, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 44. When his brothers were ready to leave, Joseph gave these instructions to his palace manager. Fill each of their sacks with as much grain as they can carry and put each man's money back into the, his sack. Then put my personal silver cup at the top of the youngest brother's sack along with the money for his grain. So the manager did as Joseph instructed him. The brothers were up at dawn and were sent on their journey with their loaded donkeys. But when they had gone only a short distance and were barely out of the city, Joseph said to his palace manager, Chase after them and stop them. When you catch up with them, ask them, Why have you repaid my kindness with such evil? Why have you stolen my master's silver cup, when he uses, which he uses to predict the future? What a wicked thing you have done. When the palace manager caught up with the men, he spoke to them as he had been instructed. What are you talking about? The brothers responded. We are your servants and would never do such a thing. Didn't we return the money we found in our sacks? We brought it back all the way from the land of Canaan. Why would we steal silver or gold from your, young, your master's house? If you find the, his cup with any one of us, let that man die and all the rest of us us my lord will be your slaves that's fair the man replied but only the one who stole the cup will be my slave the rest of you may go free they all quickly took their sacks from the backs of their donkeys and opened them the palace manager searched the brother's sacks from the oldest to the youngest and the cup was found in benjamin's sack when the brothers saw this they tore their clothing in despair then they loaded their donkeys again and returned to the city Joseph was still in his palace when Judah and his brothers arrived, and they fell to the ground before him. What have you done? Joseph demanded. Don't you know that a man like me can predict the future? Judah answered, O oh my Lord, what can we say to you? How can we explain this? How can we prove our innocence? God is punishing us for our sins. My Lord, we have all returned to be your slaves, all of us, not just our brother who had your cup in his sack. No, Joseph said, I would never do such a thing. Only the man who stole the cup will be my slave. The rest of you may go back to your father in peace. When Joseph stepped forward and said, when Judah stepped forward and said, please, my Lord, let your servant just let your servant say just one more word to you. Please do not be angry with me, even though you are as powerful as Pharaoh himself. My Lord, previously asked, you asked us, your servants, do you have a father or a brother? And we responded, yes, my Lord. We have a father who is an old man, and his youngest son is a child of his old age. His full brother is dead, and he is alone, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him very much. And you said to us, bring him here so I can see him with my own eyes. But we said to you, my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father, for his father would die. But you told us, unless your youngest brother comes with you, you will never see my face again. So we returned to your servant, our father, and told him what you had said. Later, when he said, go back again and buy us more food, we replied, we cannot go unless you let our youngest brother go with us. We'll never get to see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then my father said to us, as you know, my wife has had two sons and one of them went away and never returned doubtless he was torn to pieces by some wild animal i have never seen him since now if you take his brother away from me and any harm comes to him you will send this grieving white-haired man to his grave and now my lord i cannot go back to my father without this the boy our father's life is bound up in the boy's life if he sees that the boy is not 
with us, our Father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending sending that grieving white-haired man to his grave. My Lord, I guaranteed to my father that I would take care of this of the boy. I told him, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. So please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy, and let the boy return to his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. Amen. So what did you think of Genesis chapter 44? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Genesis chapter 44 is titled Joseph's Silver Cup. So in this, um, in this chapter, Joseph sends his brother's back home. Um, he fills each of their grains with as much as much each of their sacks with as much grain as they can carry. He also puts their money back and he takes his silver cup and puts it into Benjamin's bag. So you have to imagine the reason he like he, he's doing this is because he's like he wants to be stay close to at least his brother Benjamin who was the only one who wasn't involved in what happened to him. Um, so I think that it's important that he did it put it in Benjamin's sack to say that even if his brothers don't do the right thing, then Benjamin will get to stay with him. And um, so he sent them a short, once they had went a, a short distance, he sent his manager to them to claim the cup and bring Benjamin back. Um, so immediately the brothers were like, they knew that they didn't steal anything or take anything. So like, if, if you find it, then that one can die. Um, and the rest of us, um, and the rest of us will be your slaves. So the palace manager said, um, while that's fair that, you know, one of you will die and the rest of you can, will be slaves, only the one who stole the cup will be my slave. The rest of you may go free. So he's saying that only ben I'm only really required to bring Benjamin back. Um, cause Joseph at this point only really wanted Benjamin to come back with him. He only wanted to be with Benjamin. Um, so they found the cup in Benjamin's sack and, um, Joseph was still in his palace when Judah and his brothers arrived. So, and so instead of just Benjamin coming back, all of his brothers came back with him and, um, they fell to the ground before him and, um, what have you done? Joseph demanded, don't you know that? A man like me can predict the future. He's like, I knew one of you stole my cup. What have you done? And um, they immediately said, God is punishing us for our sins. How can we prove our innocence? So here they are unloading that guilty conscience. You know, we've been talking about this over the past couple days about releasing your conscience and asking for forgiveness. And um, I wrote off the side, guilt is released through repentance. <clears throat> So guilt is released through repentance, through confessing our sins, through asking for forgiveness. That's how we're able to, um, you know, unload that guilt that we have sitting on our hearts um, when we sin. And it says, may the Lord, um, my Lord, we have all returned to be your slaves, all of us, not just one brother who has had your cup. So they're basically saying we all have to stay here because none of us can go back without our brother because it'll kill our father. And we don't want to go back to face that. They don't want to go back to face the fact that they um, were, they came back without their brother. So they'd rather just stay where they're at. And I think that it, it's, um, that that's something that a lot of us do, not wanting to face our failure. So we never turn to face our failure. Um, instead, we just, we're like, we're just going to stay where we're at instead of trying to make, um, to make amends with the situation. Um, so Judah speaks for his brother and it's important to recognize that, um, I think it was yesterday that Judah, um, stood up and when they were sending, when Jacob was sending the, um, sending them back to Egypt, Judah stood up and was like, you know, um, I'll take the blame. You know, he, he said, I'll be responsible. Judah was the one that was like, I'll be responsible for him. So Judah was the one that spoke up in this case. And he says, please don't be angry with me, even though you are as powerful as Pharaoh your, himself. And he says, um, and then he tells him the story. He's like, remember our father that you, you asked us about our father. Um, 
and he says that um we had another um he says that my father's as you know my wife and my two sons so i like how he's telling the story from his father's perspective and not really admitting what they did to joseph themselves so they're saying that like they're telling it from he so basically he's saying it that way so he doesn't have to lie because i think in the back of his mind he almost knows that that's joseph he knows that that's joseph but he's not sure and and a lot of people we try to sugarcoat the things that we've done wrong by telling them from a different perspective and um, so in this case, he's telling it from the perspective of his of his father. And he's saying, you know, my wife has two sons and one of them went away and never returned. Doubtless, he was torn to pieces by some wild animal. I have never seen him since. So by telling this perspective, they're pretty much admitting like this is what we told your father about you. Like we told your father that you were, you know, we led your father to believe that you were torn to shreds by wild animals because we returned the coat that was bloodied and you know without you so i think that it's in funny it says now if you take um take his brother away from me any harm comes to him and you will send the grieving white-haired man to the grave so he's saying that you know if we you know go back without benjamin that jacob is going to die because he can't stand losing two both of his favorite sons from his favorite wife, Rachel. And um, so it says, and now my Lord, I can't go back to my father without the boy or our father's life for our father. Our father's life is bound up in the boy's life. Um, and he said, so please let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy. Let the boy return to his brother. So he's like here, you know, I accepted responsibility when we came here for this boy. So keep me instead because obviously he doesn't know that really just joseph doesn't want you he wants benjamin but he's offering himself up you know that's i wrote aside self-sacrifice is love so being able to sacrifice yourself or the things that you want in life in order to you know appease or please or help somebody else um is a great sign of love so um, he says, I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. He's like, I can't go back to my father a second time without his son. Um, so I think it's interesting the way that he is, you know, um, releasing this burden upon his life. So that is my interpretation of Genesis chapter 44. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.